let's look at putting words or sentences into its algebraic form. Now, from now on, guys, it's very useful if you can be able to put worded, express, worded sentences into algebraic equations or uh, expressions because that helps your working out to work much more easily and get the answer quickly and it also shows good working out when you're doing the exam so the teacher can mark it nice and smoothly. So, have a look at this guys, starting with question one. Uh, if P represents any number, write an algebraic expression for four times the number. So, four times the number is what we want to change into its algebraic form. Now, it tells us that P represents any number. So, P would be the number. So, if it's four times that particular number, it would be four times P, isn't it? Which we can just say it's 4P. We don't really like to put the multiplication sign in between because when there's nothing in between, it simply means multiply. So, we'd like to keep it in the simplest form like this. So, it's pretty simple, isn't it? We'll try another one, question two. If P represents any number, write an algebraic expression for the number divided by three. So again, we're using the pronumeral P. That's because they mentioned it in here, but if you're doing your exam and if, you don't, if they don't specify it for you, you can make up your own pronumeral. So we're just gonna use P here, and the algebraic uh, expression that we wanna make is the number divided by three. So if the number is P and we're dividing by three, we can just say it's P divided by 3 using um, our division symbol, but algebraically it's probably better to write it as P over 3. The fraction implies division as well, so you can do P over 3, which means P divided by 3. Uh, 3. If P represents any number, write an algebraic expression for the previous consecutive number. Now guys, do we all know what consecutive numbers mean? Consecutive. Consecutive means one after the other, like 7 and 8, 10 and 11. 25 and 26. These numbers are all uh, consecutive. Now, if there's three consecutive numbers, it could be 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. These are all consecutive numbers, one after the other. So the difference between each number is always one. So if we want the previous, previous means the one before, the previous consecutive number and P is the number, then it would simply be P minus one. So to get the number b before P, it would simply be P minus one. Yes? Question four, it says if P represents any number, write an algebraic expression for one third of the number. So again, we're using P and we want to write one third of that number P in an algebraic form. Now it says one third, so it would simply be P over three, or one third of P, which is simply P over three. One third means we're dividing by three, aren't we? So you're basically dividing P by three. Make sense, guys? So use the fraction notation uh, when you're doing divisions. Five, if again P represents any number, write an algebraic expression for the product of the number and four. So the number is P and four is a constant number four, yes? So if we're multiplying P by four, because the product, what does product mean? It's multiply, multiplication means product, isn't it? So it's simply gonna be four P. It's better, write, not be, it's better to write the constant number out the front so it represents the coefficient and then the pronumeral following. Yeah, guys, so it's best to write it like this. And you don't need the multiplication sign because when you don't put anything in between, it simply means multiplication, which implies the product. Yes? Six. Again, P represents any number. Write an algebraic expression for the square root of the number. Square root is the opposite of squaring. So you might have seen the root notation. Um, the square root of any number, which is P, would just be root of P. This um, symbol, if you haven't seen it before, that means square root, which is the opposite of squaring, yes? Seven, if A, B, and C represent any numbers, write an algebraic expression for the sum of A, B, and C. So we've got three pronumerals or three variables here, A, B, and C, and we want to know the sum. Sum means adding, isn't it? Addition. So simply a plus b plus c. And that's it. We can't go any further because there's no more like terms. So it's simply a plus b plus c. Make sure you know that sum means addition. Alright, let's look at 8. If a, b, and c represent any numbers, write an algebraic expression for the product of a, b, and c. Now product means multiplication. Yes, so that's the key word here. Multiplication, um, that represents product. So a times b times C is what we're going to put, isn't it? 
But as I said guys, it's best to not put that multiplication sign when you want to leave your answers in simplest form. So it should just be ABC. If there's nothing in between the variables, it means multiplication. So keep it in its simplest form like this. Alright, 9. If A and B represent any numbers, write an algebraic expression for the difference of A and B. Now the difference would always be the larger number minus the smaller number, isn't it? That would represent the difference. The difference is the subtraction, isn't it? So the larger number minus the smaller number would give us the difference. If we do the smaller number minus the larger number, we'd get a negative outcome, won't we? So we won't really want that. That wouldn't really represent the difference. So, because we want the gap, don't we? So, in part A, they tell us that where A is the greater, is greater than B. So A is greater, which means A is the larger number. So we'd do A minus B. The larger number comes first, and then we subtract the smaller number away from the larger number. Now, part B, it says where B is, the great, is greater than A. So B is the larger number, so this time we'd do B minus A. Again, we always do the larger number minus the smaller number, um, and that's what they give us in this part B, isn't it? Uh, question 10. If A and B represent any numbers, write an algebraic expression for 3 times A plus B. So we're going to have three lots of A's, and then we're going to add B. Plus means add, isn't it? So we're going to add B at the end. So 3 times A would simply be 3A, isn't it? Don't have, you don't have to write 3 times A, because again, if there's nothing in between, it means multiply. So 3 times A, which is 3A, and then plus B, so we just simply added the B at the end. And that's it. We can't go any further, because that's the simplest form. There's no more like terms. 11. If a, b, and c represent any numbers, write an algebraic expression for the square root of the sum of a and b. So we're going to square root. Again, remember that little root, um, like a roof symbol there? We looked at that before, haven't we? So that's square root, which is the opposite of squaring. But we're going to square root the sum of a and b. So we're going to square root a bigger, bigger expression. So the sum of a and b, that's the whole thing we're going to be square rooting. So it's simply going to be square root, and a plus b, the entire thing, goes inside the root, because we're going to be square rooting the sum of the total of a and b. Yes? That's it. 12. Write an expression for the number of boys in a class if there are g girls and a total of t students. So we want to know how many boys there are in this class. There's a total of t students. We're going to use this um, pronumeral or variable for the number of total students. And in that class, there are g number of girls. So g is the variable for number of girls. So it's either boys or girls. So if there's g girls in the class, guys, we'd simply minus the girls away from the total um, number of students, isn't it? And they tell us that the total of number of students is t, and the total number of girls is g. So we'd simply do t minus g, and that would be the simple expression for boys. You can just leave it like that, because we can't simplify any further, since there's no more like terms. That is the answer. Uh, 13. Write an expression for the perimeter of a square of length x. So, guys, a square. A square has four equal sides, don't, doesn't, doesn't it? So it has one, two, three, four sides of equal length. And... They tell us that the square has a length of x. So if there's 4 of the same length, it would simply be 4 times the length, isn't it? So we'd multiply 4 times, and they tell us that the length is x, so it's 4x. You don't have to write multiplication in the sign in between, because again, if there's nothing in between, it means multiplied, it implies multiplication. So that is the answer for question 13.